Someone else at the bottom of the zoom window uh, is this little smiley face and it says reactions. And if I click that and I raise my hand, it lets me raise my hand digitally. It lets me know you have a question. It forms a little cue. I can unmute you and bring you on. If you don't want to turn your camera on, you don't have to turn your camera on. I hate being on video. I totally understand that. Uh, so you can just ask via audio if you like. You can throw your questions in the chat. Uh, all good, I'll answer those as well. Um, if you're one of the ones that's watching on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, I can see your comments. I can answer those questions as well. Um, and I'm gonna start today with Shirley, and I gotta find Shirley, and I'm gonna unmute Shirley. Um, and you'll just have to hit the unmute, the mute icon, Shirley, it's in the bottom left-hand corner. She had a really good question, and, and, and I wanna hear this, but to stick on my theme, Shirley, which one of the three buckets are you in? I'd be close between two and three. Between I have sold a lot of work mm -hmm. around the world uh, for 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, have an email list. I'm not aggressive on it. I am more aggressive on, on social media, mm -hmm. but letting the galleries do my thing and mm -hmm. trying to make the transition over to you guys and uh, worried about losing the galleries. Yes. God, I love this question. Absolutely love this question. Um, just out of curiosity, when did, when, when did you come to this realization? Because most, uh, mo most of us- I've been are... wrestling with it for a while during COVID. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it takes something like COVID to teach you a lesson, right? To teach to teach everybody a lesson that the gallery model doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And 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 when I say that, I've been doing this for a good clip of time now. And whereas before, all the knowledge that I had on this whole entire gallery model was acquired through what I've read. Now I've interviewed enough people and seen some data internally from customers that I can put this whole thing together. The, the, the section of artists, okay, that make a good, healthy living, by which I mean over six figures a year, okay, as artists selling through galleries, as photographers selling through galleries, is less than 0.2% of people that are artists uh, that, that, are, that are claiming that they're artists, right? And there's their stats. It is the odds of, of doing incredibly well it, it, it's like playing the lotto or it's like it's like you're an athlete and making it as a professional right like it is such a small number that get there and what's more the 50 50 haircut and, and and not getting paid promptly sometimes and then you're responsible for your own material costs as well as all the rest of the costs of the business and your studio and everything else it, it, it it's being sold as the dream to everyone and almost no one makes it that way right almost no one makes it and also it's a tenant farmer relationship you are, you guys are exploited as artists, as creatives, because you don't want to do the marketing yourself. Because someone has sold everyone a dream that you can somehow magically just create things in your studio, not do anything else, and that can be your living. That that's not a job. That's not a career. That's a vacation. That's a holiday, right? I would love to do that. I would love to drive race cars on a track and and, and make enough money, but that's not going to happen for me, right? So, I love that equation. What's interesting here too is that the advice that I'm gonna give you in, in, in this scenario, and, and I'd love to talk about real numbers to give it some teeth if you're comfortable, but don't feel like you need to do it if you don't want it comfortable. But do you remember, do you remember early on on Facebook when or Instagram when you would follow people and they would follow you and you would see a hundred percent of their posts and they would see a hundred percent of your posts? Those were the good old days, right? And in the good old days, the balance of power was on our side, meaning Facebook knew that it needed thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of followers to start growing as a platform, to invite all of their friends and continue growing. At a point, the balance of power shifted, where Facebook's like, we're growing, we know what our growth coefficient is, this thing will just keep going and going and going, it'll never stop. So now we're gonna shift the balance of power. If people want to have their posts seen, they're gonna have to pay for it, right? And so it was, when, when Facebook needed us, they gave us everything that we wanted. Then when the balance power changed, it went like that. So if, 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 if you contemplate the gallery situation like that, that's how I would play it in, in, in your case. And, and, and one, I would start out with the fact that because it's COVID, okay, still, um, you know, although I think it's probably gonna go away with this Omicron thing, at least I hope so, fingers crossed on that one. You should be able to get away with selling direct and doing some marketing on your own right now under the excuse of COVID. I don't think that's gonna hold up long term, but I would say you, you probably do have a window of time. You're gonna have to be like, look, I, 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 I can't afford to feed my family here. You guys haven't done anything. Your doors have been closed for the last two years. All of my business has fallen on the shelf. What do you want me to do? I, I, I don't wanna do any of this, right? So that should be a little window in time. 
if the gallery relationship okay and so so let's say you get away with that for a little while and then finally they're like Shirley, you have to stop you can't keep doing this okay uh, or you're not going to be in this gallery anymore. I have thousands of artists that are lined up to take the place, which they're probably not lying about. They probably do. Um, you, you you can say to them, awesome, um, but I, I started to get some momentum, and I feel like I was really growing the business. And let's say this one gallery is selling $75,000 a year for you, right? Let's just You don't even have to tell me the numbers. Let's just say that. Do you know what I would say? I would say, I don't want to interrupt or hurt our relationship. I really like what we have going on here. And so I'll give you the same 50-50 split for anything that we sell directly on my website. Okay, you leave it just like that, and, and and you see what they take. I would only do that if they were if they were giving me a significant chunk of income. Okay, if they were giving me a significant chunk of income, I would do that for a little while. I would do that for a little while as I build more momentum and I get more email addresses and I get more uh, social media followers. And just like that balance of power with Facebook, it'll eventually just shift like that where all of a sudden you're not going to need them and you're going to be like, sorry, I'm out. See you later. Right. So that's one option to do it. Um, at, the, at, the, at the very, very, you know, they're really pushing back. They're saying you're out. Say, no worries. I'll give you the 50-50 split. And by the way, because you signed it up with art storefronts, they can just log into your dashboard at any point in time they want and see exactly everything that's sold, right? So you can be like, here's total transparency. Everything that I'm selling online, boom, you can see it. You, you can have it, right? That'll give you some air cover with that income coming in for me to teach you how to get your marketing machine spun up, right? I'm going to teach you how to run a sale. I'm going to teach you how to handle the email. And I'm going to teach you how to do the social posting. I'm going to teach you how to run your own live art shows. Where is a gallery close, local to you? Can you drive to it? No, no it's far away. Okay. But anyway, we, we would show you how to do all those things. Amazing. Awesome. A couple of months in, you won't need them. You won't need them anymore because you'll have enough. You'll, you'll know enough of, of your followers, your fans, your emails where you'll be like, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need, I don't need them anymore. I don't need them anymore. You know? And I, I, I always use the example. I, I used it in, um, in my little video up top, but my buddy, Matthew Lockett, he's been a, a customer for a long time, painter in uh, Quebec and Canada, really talented. His whole world before joining us was paint for six months to nine months, have the big dog and pony gallery show, you know, the guest list, the, the robes, performance art, the bartenders, the whole thing. And then rinse and repeat, do it again, right? The last big show that he had, this was pre-COVID, he did 114,000 Canadian, I think, all in on all the pieces he sold. Obviously, the 50-50 split. You know, obviously, as I drilled into his business, he had some expense getting the paintings to the gallery, getting the ones that didn't sell back, you know, in addition to his canvases and everything else. And during the course of COVID, he ran two live art shows over a period of 16 days. And he made 35,000 Canadian, right? Kept 100% of that revenue. And he sat there and he looked at that and he's like, what the hell am I doing? What am I doing? I kept all of the money on that. I know every single solitary person that bought all of that stuff, right? I now have the ability to follow up with them, treat them like collectors, continue to romance them, get to know them, and they will buy again and again and again. So it, 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 the balance of power shifts so quickly and you feel so good once it does. But anyway, after all that rant, where does that place you? What do you think? What's... What's the what's the read? I'd be curious on because uh, I'm just in the process of signing up. I'd be curious what the uh, percentages of artists that are including their galleries, like you talked about, uh, in addition to their online sales. Very, are they linking their galleries or? No, they, they're all selling direct. I mean, it, it, if if for the ones that we have selling in galleries, I would imagine one out of ten, or maybe even one out of twenty, or one out of thirty it, is in that is in that situation. Right where they're okay. they're selling enough, and also I would say like that whole equation has been turned upside down on its head because there was a bunch that were selling really really well, and then COVID hit and it went crickets, you mm -hmm. know, almost overnight, mm -hmm. uh, which is terrifying. So we have some folks that are in that situation too. But I would only do that if the income was significant, right? Like if, if well, and for for me, it's the more this particular gallery because it's on the west coast. It's getting a significant international travel mm -hmm. when it is uh, healthy days. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so it's, so I do have some collectors around the world, but I don't have access to their emails. No. And you don't know who the hell they are and you can't, you cannot yeah. market to them in consistency. And, you know, I, I, again, I cite that book, Wyland's book, and I think you should buy that book. I'm not kidding. Like when I say everyone needs to buy that book, I am not incentivized by Wyland. Although I think that guy owes me a night out on the town because I've been selling that book for like two years. That book is phenomenal. Okay. It is like a short read and no joke. That guy is, that, that guy is incredible. Like I, I honestly think he's probably the best selling artist in the United States. Anyway. He talked about the power of the collector list, right? And I read that book probably four years ago, 
right? And since then, I've, I've continued to work on so many of my um, customers' various different marketing initiatives. And I'm not kidding. Some of these people are selling 30 to 40% of what they create to their collectors. You, Shirley, could be selling 30 to 40% of the new series that you create to the collectors if you knew who the hell they were. That's why you got to get out of the gallery. That is why you have to, have to, have to. Yeah, and people are asking me what the name of the book is. Hold on, let me get it. I feel like I got to start doing but that. I lose, Go ahead. But I lose that, uh, that, that uh, face front to those, that international audience. Yeah, you might. You might lose a little bit of it. Where did my damn book go? I have small children. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to rant on that, but I want to get the book. Yeah. A bunch of people in the chat are asking. I can't find it. It's the links are in the chat though, you guys, and I'll I'll send you I'll send you the thing after the fact. Yeah, you might, surely, but you know what? Um, you have nothing. You have nothing. I don't care if they give you thousands of international people, and that business is incredible. A one-off sale is not a one-off sale is like you know it's like a it's like a tiny little drug hit to you, right? Like it's you're only as good as your last at bat with that, right? Like you have to keep acquiring, 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 and it, it, they're they're just gonna poof go up in the air. One collector for you is worth more than 30 new international buyers because that one collector for the rest of your life might buy 18 pieces from you. That's how it works. People get bonded and people just keep buying and buying and buying and buying and buying. Um, so I, I, I could make the argument a thousand different ways and I'm not kidding when I say it. It's your retirement account. Your collector list is your retirement account and they'll be with you for the rest of your life. And your prices are just going to keep going up and up and up and they just go right along for the ride and usually their income keeps going up and up and up too so it's it's okay. yeah you got it you, you you already know it in your heart because you saw what happened in COVID, yeah. right you can never let yeah. that happen to you again ever 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 yeah. yeah yeah no in fact i just made a sale for them through social media and they kind of got upset with me that i was advertising on for them mm -hmm. and i'm like it's a sale <laughs> why are we arguing about this yeah yeah that that scares me already if they're already getting you know huffy puffy on it like you know mm -hmm. that, yeah that worries me um okay thank you yeah and welcome almost aboard are, are you signing up uh yes uh, i just talked to matt we're gonna seal it up on monday good and just as a final where's um where's the gallery the gal uh that one's on the west coast in vancouver oh in vancouver okay okay um I do love Vancouver, pretty town. But okay, yeah, we'll, we'll 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 get into it more. But make the call about whether or not you want to pacify those folks, or make the call about whether or not you want to just rip the bandaid. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, you know, too, as as, as a final on these like on the on the 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 live art shows, right? So we started doing the live art shows, and then Alexander, I promise, I'll get your comment next. We started doing the live art shows and we're seeing a great deal of success. Now, a part of our playbook is you, you, you tease the, the live art show, you announce the live art show, you're gonna run the live art show. A couple of days before the live art show, you have a private Zoom call with your collectors and they get to see the entire live art show before you even have the live art show. And now what some of our top customers are doing are they're selling a large portion of the live art show before the gallery even opens up, right? And so here's all these people on opening night walking into the gallery, seeing a bunch of red dots on all the pieces because they've already been sold to the collectors. Amazing system. Amazing system. Um, okay. Alexander, you're up next. And you'll have to unmute Alexander. I'll let you know when you get it. You just have to hit that mic icon, bottom left-hand corner. And if you usually just click on the microphone, that, that usually knocks it out. Okay, maybe Alexandra's not figured it out. I don't know. Are you still there, Alexandra? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you on the on the unmute. If if you can pop in and get there, um, then then definitely do it. Um, okay, what else, guys? Questions? Someone else has got to have a question. Uh, Patrick. Oh, there we go. It worked. Wonderful. Here I am. Yeah. Uh, no, I was listening to what you were saying to Shelley, and basically. Uh, you covered everything I had in mind, mm -hmm. and um, uh, thank you so much for that. Um, my concern, I wasn't here from start of this uh, meeting, so about live shows, they can be completely done online. You said you don't have to participate any kind of fairs, art fairs anymore, right? 
Well, that's not entirely true. I think, you know, as as I as I look at this business at a macro, I think okay, if there's and I and I love taking it out of art terms, you know, we're all yeah. told we all, we're all told we need to eat a balanced diet, right? So yeah. it, the balanced diet and and in, in my experience of growing a successful art business, photography business, does include doing some live shows, doing doing some fairs and shows if you can. And the reason I mm-hmm. say that is because they are extremely effective lead generation tactics. You get right. the booth, you get the booth, okay? And, and you have to do this right, and nobody ever does this right, but here's, here's, here's the high-level playbook, okay? Because I think this is valuable. And I'll, and I'll send a link um, to some episodes I've recorded on this uh, previously. But you get the booth. It forces you, okay, to create a bunch of inventory. If you're an artist, maybe it's all originals. Ideally, it's originals and some prints. If you're a photographer, it, it, it forces you to print a bunch of inventory that you wouldn't do otherwise, okay? That alone is a win because most, most artists and photographers don't have enough inventory on hand. Then you get into the booth. Then while you're in the booth, you have in front of the booth either a fish roll for business cards or ideally a clipboard where people can enter their email address and you have a big print Okay, of some kind there. And you don't have to spend a ton of money on it. It can be 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 dollars cost. Enter to win the free print, balloons on it if they'll let you, right? And you get a bunch of people that fill that out. Okay. You have the QR codes on the outside of the booth that people can walk by if they don't want to talk to you, scan the thing and get onto the email list. Okay. Also extremely effective. Um, yes. after the show, oh, during the show, when you're in the booth, you run a live art show, okay? You run a live art show saying, hey, guys, I'm down here at such and such show. And, and this is just with the phone in the booth talking just like that. Hey, guys, I'm running a live art show down here. Or I, I, I'm down here at such and such. For those of you who can make it, I'd love to see you. For everyone that can't make it, though, I thought I'd run a live art show right here in the booth and show you all the pieces just to let you know. All of the special show deals I have are available to you guys, too. Um, you can just send me a message and, and we can talk about it, right? Show yeah. ends. Show ends. You email everybody that opted into that thing, okay? And what you then do is you pick a winner. You email the winner and you say, congratulations, winner. Um, I'm going (laughs) to ship you out the print. For everyone else that didn't win is my way of saying thanks for entering. Take such and such percentage off store-wide for the next three days. Thanks again. Any questions, email me. You do that. You do that. And you do three or four of those a year. Over time, I find that to be extremely effective. The problem with the shows and fairs, as many people know, is they're hit or miss. They're hit or miss. Some are a home run, some are duds. And that just is how it ends up working out. And so a lot of people say, I'm going to go do a show, right? And it's sort of like firing an arrow at the bullseye or, or trying, right. to, trying to hit a hole in one with a golf ball, right? Like if you only have mm-hmm. one shot at that, you aren't going to do it. Mm-hmm. So you have to do three or four. And if you do that, and you're marketing consistently after the fact, which no artists do, then you will 100% do great. You will 100% do great, and it's an easy way to give yourself some additional marketing exposure as opposed to just the digital stuff um, you know, to grow the business. So I still really like them, and I also still really like them now because you know, I've got a lot of customers, and a lot of my customers are reporting. They're out there pounding the pavement, and the crowds are coming back, right? Like, you know, it's not, it's not COVID crazy anymore. People are still going out and doing things. So I, 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 I do still like them. I do think they're part of a balanced diet, so to speak. They expensive. Yes. If it's a good show, they expensive to participate. Yes. And for the, uh, how you said, the one shot hit or miss. Yeah. Um, it may be very costly if you, like Shelly said, if she doesn't live in a uh, West Coast area or whatever a uh, show wherever she has exposure mm-hmm. uh for the live shows then it's really good options and fun but it's most difficult ones probably in this yeah day. if you if you do everything that that we outline in terms of market and everything that i just went through right like the qr codes yeah. the print giveaway the emailing the sale if you have that going on, okay, which is the diff- is oftentimes the difference between getting ROI at a show or not, and then yeah. if after the fact you're actually working on your marketing and you're marketing consistently, meaning each yeah. one of those shows you're going to put 
it's a crappy show, you're going to put 25 on your email list. If it's a good show, you can put a couple hundred on your email list, right? And you're yeah. just doing that one or two or three or four or five or six times a year, right? And then yeah. year after year after year after year, you're marketing. You can't lose. You can't lose. And, you know, yeah, the smart game, artist. It's not like that's just a numbers game, right? Yes, yes. But also the marketing after the fact consistently. The smart artist knows that they can afford to lose money on some shows because they know they'll get it back in the years to come if they're marketing oh, consistently, yeah. right? Like you pay $2,000 plus the hotel, let's just say. You're $3,000 all in. And you acquire some leads along the way throughout that year. And on one particular show, you lost money, right? You lost, you, you, you lost a couple of thousand dollars. But you know what? You got some emails on the list. Three years later, one of those emails on the list bought $30,000 worth of art. That show just became pretty damn profitable, didn't it? The only reason you made that money is because you were marketing consistently to those leads all the time after the show, which no, almost no artists do. So that's the game. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, my pleasure. Mm hmm I'm done. Where, where are you from? You where, where, are you, me back. where are you from originally? Just out of curiosity, Alexander. I'm from Russia, but I live in the United States. Got it. So you're Russian. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the questions. Okay. I'm assuming, yay, you have a question That's, that that looks like a, a hand. Yay or yeah? I don't know. I don't know how I pronounce yay. it. No, yay. You, you're correct. Thank oh. you. Hi, hi, Patrick. Uh, hi. I've been listening to some of your uh, podcasts and I actually want to say great information. Thank you. Oh, thank you for sharing with all of us. But um, I guess my, my question is um, because I know you, you a lot of times talk about marketing mm -hmm. and social media mm -hmm. and doing the live show. Well, and not all that great if you already have a big following base, but if you are starting artist and don't have any following. I mean, I can post as much as I can want, and but there's no really response because no one really gets to see it. Mm -hmm. I'm regular posting it. Mm -hmm. You know, every you know every day I do a story. Every other mm -hmm. day I do a post. So I mean, if we follow all. Let's say follow all of the the social media rules, mm -hmm. but no one gets to see it because it's just you. I only have you know let's say 100 followers. So yep. I mean, it's how do you go around that? It sucks in the beginning, doesn't it? Oh, it totally sucks. Followers are built one follower at a time. Um, I'd have to look and see what you're doing to see what you're doing right or wrong. Could be you're doing things completely right and you just haven't given yourself enough time. Uh, could be doing you're doing some things wrong. It could be your art's not validated. So I'd, I would have to look at all of it. But mm -hmm. the the first couple of years suck. They suck. Right. It's the hardest. It's the hardest part of the entire journey. But you have to be doing a little bit of everything, right? You have to, you know. You have to be capturing emails and, and figuring out some creative ways to do that. You have to be regularly emailing the emails. You have to be executing sales when the time is right. Yes, you have to be posting consistently on socials. When you announce a sale, you need to learn the basics of omni-channel marketing, which means the email language dovetails with the Instagram post, dovetails with the Instagram story, dovetails with the Facebook post, such that some people will get exposure to your message in multiple different channels multiple different times. And then you have to do so consistently all year long. And early on, first year especially, sucks, really hard, a grind. Year two, still a grind. Year three, start to get some serious momentum. Years four and five is when the business really starts to take off and no one ever approaches it with that time frame. but that's the time frame in reality that works. Okay, no, that, that, that makes more sense because mm -hmm. uh, I think that's kind of where it gets, you know, I know we're talking about the art store fronts and everything and it all sounds amazing. What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your, what's your, work, what's your Instagram handle? Throw it in the chat. I'm actually curious. I want to see. Uh, yeah, Inspire. Usually I have this like Chrome bug Instagram. So Y A Y Inspire. Y A Y Inspire. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let me, um, let me get my little trickery going here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Me personally. You personally. I'm not on the on on that. I usually I show myself on the uh, um on stories, mm -hmm. but I usually I didn't put it on the on the actual. Problem. Problem number one. Mm -hmm. Problem number two. This is not your real art. Where was it? This is not your real art. It's not going to work that way. This is not your real art on a wall. That's a room mock-up. This is not your real art on a wall. That's a room mock-up. This is not your real art on a wall. That's an art room mock-up. So is that. So is that. All the rest of these are 2D images. Here's at least getting closer. I want Ye's smiling face holding this. You want to know why? This is what people are buying. This is something right. that's real. It's tangible. It's got 
hooks that hang on the wall. I can talk about it. People can see it, right? If, mm-hmm. I, if I, I, you are a part of the brand as much as your work is. How am I supposed to bond with this? All this is is 2D image after 2D image after 2D image after 2D image after 2D image. Mm-hmm. And despite the fact they're beautiful 2D images, what are we bombarded with on social media all day long? 2D image after 2D image after 2D image. You get blind to it. Why would I want to follow this? I don't want to follow this. Who are you? I don't know who the hell you are. You're not holding any of your work here. Is this you? At least there's one photo of you on here. And you have a dog. This is this is the best photo of the entire bunch. Chrome always like messes up my Instagram for some reason. There's you and your dog. Now I feel like I'm getting to know you, yay. I have dogs too. We could possibly start talking about dogs. Now I'm all of a sudden emotionally invested in you. If you have the dog and you're holding this piece and you're a real human being and you know I could start to get to know you, then people might start bonding with you, but this ain't getting it done. Now your stories could be good. Again, I get this, I got this weird bug with Chrome. Like, that, that, that's just supposed to work. Why doesn't that work? I gotta, get a, I gotta get my cell phone back on the screen. But anyway, that would be, that would be the initial advice. Like this is, this is like one of the cardinal sins that you guys break all the time is, you can't help it too, by the way, I'm not faulting you. You guys are visual people. And so by default, right. you think everything's like, everyone's like you. Like I cannot translate a 2D image like this to something that goes on my wall. All to me that is, is a 2D image. And yeah, like, look, okay, you could say, well, well, Patrick, look one down. I, I did a beautiful room mock-up. I know that's not your room. I know this is a bullshit photo. Everyone does because everyone does these room mock-ups. And all it says is that I don't really have a real product, uh, but I've done some Photoshop work, right? Like, mm-hmm. no, it needs to be the real thing. And again, like, do not underestimate that people, normal people, i.e. your buyers, your customers, do not have your power of visualization, okay? They need Mm -hmm. to see you holding the real thing. This is a real thing. This is a real thing. It has dimensions. It has height. It has weight. Those images, it's hard to do backwards. Those images are just pretty pictures. I can't put this, what do you think I'm going to do? Print this out and staple it to my wall? I can't do that. I can't make that visual leap. It's got to be real. And the second you start getting more real with it and start talking about the pieces and start holding the pieces up and start showing your face and start showing me some of the things you're interested in, the whole ball game will change. But you, so you recommend to do more of like within those posts to sprinkle as well, be more live videos, but as posts versus just having it as a story. Yeah, it needs to be both. It needs to be both. Got it. Okay. That's a good advice. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. My pleasure. It, it, it's a grind early on. It's a grind. You know, I know it gets frustrating once, once you start making sales though, then you get to start spending some money on ads and the ads really help things move even quicker. So that's, that's also, yeah, and then in that case, like, so my question was also about the ads, like mm-hmm. in the ad sense, do you recommend no. to spend it on no, no, Facebook, no, no, Facebook, Facebook and Instagram, not, not, not ad sense, not Google, not any of the rest of them, Facebook yeah, and okay. Instagram, that's it. Facebook and Instagram. And do you target it more towards specific demographic or do you usually go wide? No, that's where, that's where all artists and photographers screw up. Um, you think so, so advertising, an easy way to think about advertising is there's two kinds of audiences. There are cold audiences and there are warm audiences. Uh, I usually use the relationship example. A cold audience is, is someone that you've never met before, right? You, they're just meeting you for the first time. A warm audience includes they've met you before all the way to they've grown up with you in high school and they know everything about you and in between, right? So you only pay to show ads to the warm audience. Now, the warm audience in this instance is people that have interacted with your content and social media for the last 365 days, people that have clicked and come to your website, people that are on your email list, all of those combined c- constitute your warm audience. And those are the only people you pay to show ads to. That's it. And so you still have to get new people in and we teach you a bunch of techniques, but from an right. ad standpoint, it does not work. Art is not a product where you can go and show it usually on sale to people that you've never met before and get an ROI. It just does not work that way. It never has worked that way. And art is a one-off purchase. It's not a recurring purchase. So you will never make that pay. And do not ever boost a post. Do not ever waste your money boosting a post. That's a great advice. Yes. So really, so really more of, of, you know, try to get a little more followers and engagement. And then after that, when you advertise, do it to more like of all the people who are actually been interacting. Exactly. Exactly. Got it. Exactly. That's a great advice. I think that's that's definitely a, a big mistake that I know I personally have. I think I have made. Many, oh, many every, all, all, all kinds of people make it. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. No. Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Jay, you're up next. Go ahead, Jay. 
And you'll have to unmute, Jay. Let you know when you get it. Yep, gotcha. Yeah, you were talking about COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, here I am. I have it. Yeah, I'm sorry. We've got we we we've had we've had it running through our entire office. And if you would have asked me, you know, a month and a half ago, I would have told you I know more people that haven't had it than have had it. And now, now everybody, has I know it. more people that have had it than haven't had it. It's amazing how quickly that shifted, right? But I hope you feel better, brother. Yeah, I, according to my doctor, two three years I'll be fine. Um, <laughs> anyways. Um, I started out years ago, it must be 15 years ago, mm -hmm. I was really into painting, etc. Um, and I went to the galleries, the shows, and I got a very nice response, sold some things, and then I got really sick and tired of schlepping all this stuff to different art galleries. For sure. And I, I don't know, you know, I don't know if people have had that same experience, but, um, but on Facebook, I, I have lots of um, followers, but not in art. And I'm just wondering how to use that. Um, I've got, I don't know, way over the limit as far as, you know, writing goes. I mean, I do a lot of poetry and lyrics and stuff. Do I go back to the same people that follow me, you know, like me for the, that form of art and try and, um, you know, sell them on it do the same thing you did with the pyramid etc yeah i mean you're just overthinking it you need to start marketing you start marketing consistently and there's no shortcut there's no magic bullet there's no special group that you're going to figure out there's no special niche that you're going to target you're going to start it on the grind like everyone else you're going to go through oh, the yeah. misery go through the misery of the first couple of years as you're spinning the machine up and then it gets easier after that okay well thank you yeah i don't you notice i don't sugarcoat it right i just don't i'm so sick of the people that are out there that are offering this like special hacky solution that works so incredibly well and you know i we, we have a couple of charlatans that follow us that that sell these various different things and i i, I don't i don't even i don't even want to get into it but it infuriates me there's no shortcut but the awesome thing is you know if we were talking about this when you were coming up right or when i was coming up the galleries were it the galleries were it if you were going to make it it was the galleries or doing the shows and theirs, right? And the shows and theirs is hard on your body, it's hard on your pocketbook, it's hard on time, it's hard on relationships, you know, driving, staying in crappy hotels, eating crappy meals, not exercising, not good for you, not healthy, right? Um, I'm sure mm -hmm. it could be if you had the discipline, but the, the, the equation has changed and it has swung completely. And this industry is going through its taxi cab Uber moment and it's going through its blockbuster Netflix moment, right? Which is awesome. The only pain in the ass is that you have to learn how to do these things. But once you do, the upside potential on the other side of it is fantastic, better than it's ever been for the artist. But you got to do the you got to do the work. And so the sooner you come to terms with the fact that like, okay, I've got a little bit of a grind here ahead of me, right? I've got a, I've got a, I've got a good three to five year run. But once I do, I will actually have a real business that's growing every year, right? I can actually live full time off my art. And oh by the way, I can do that for the rest of my life. And that's a that's an awesome thing about what you guys do, right? Like artists don't retire. You guys don't quit. Everybody wants to do it until their last breath, and that's amazing. Because let me tell you, when I hit sixty, if I can retire, I am done. I am done, you know? Like I don't want to keep working. I want to enjoy my time. But like art gives you guys such a level of pleasure. Creating gives you such a level of pleasure that you can literally do it for the rest of your life. It's amazing. So the point is you know, and I don't want to sur surmise how old you are or not you are, but you have a whole hell of a lot of time left to get this right, right? You still have a ton of time to get it right. And you're at the top of your craft and the top of your game in terms of your style. So, you know, if you can come to terms with learning to do the marketing and doing it, like, you're, it's going to be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jay. All right, somebody else had an interesting question for me. Who was it? Da, 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 da. It was Ann. And I'm going to unmute you because I want to make sure I understand this question correctly. Um, mic icon and bottom left-hand corner, I'll let you know when you get it. Are you there in Woodford? Can you find the mic icon? Sometimes people are at work and they're like, I can't talk, I'm at work. Which I think is awesome that you would multitask your work to, to, to come hear me rant. Okay, and well, if you want to unmute, uh, you can unmute. Jeffrey's asking in the chat, hi, I was wondering what the best way to go about starting building a client email list. Consistent, regular marketing. 
and following the plan, there is no best way. Kind of along the same advice that I was giving Jay, right? Like there's no shortcut. You have to learn how to market and you know, it's, it's a balanced diet of doing things. Um, Carl, you're up next. Go ahead, Carl. Hi, sorry, Hi. I raised my hand like five times. I saw it. I, I saw it. I was like, I was like, I must be answering her questions. Call, come in. No. Oh, it's a <laughs> Somebody yeah, yeah. came in and interrupted yeah, yeah. me. Yeah, all good. Um, no, I was. I, I didn't really have a question. I just had a couple of comments um, for you and for everyone, really. Sure. Um, I started painting in December. I I had to move stuff out of my daughter's room, so mm -hmm. instead of putting it in storage, I kind of got to work. And I have to tell you all, it doesn't really matter if. If you see things like if I put one dollar into an ad or a show and I don't get two, is it worth it? You really can't see it like that because for any business, really, it's about if you're like your health. Like if I eat a hamburger, am I going to run a mile right after it or am I going to eat a celery and then sit for a while? So when you're looking at all these strategies that Patrick is talking about, which I'm a huge fan of Patrick's for the oh, last month, you. I've been listening to this like every like three days a week. Um, you'll see that it's a very holistic way to do it. Like if you go to my Instagram, which I just started on a whim, like for fun, it's grown a lot, but not because I put a lot of good stuff on it. It's because I've just put fun things on it and I've done it consistently. So it's not even really about, you know, having to do a certain, you know, a certain formula, like so specifically, like there's no magic thing. Cause I saw people, I've seen people that have been doing it for like years and following these other people that you were talking about, like, oh, come here. You don't have to do all these strategies and you'll be a six figure artist in no time. Yeah, that's such bullshit. And that's not such true. Bullshit. <laughs> that is not true. I, know, I hate it. I, I mean, hate it. I already have a six figure business, but it's 13 years old. And it's not to say that you have to paint for 13 years to make six figures. Um, I, I mean, it doesn't have to do with art, but, mm -hmm. but you do have to do it consistently. I mean, you have to put your heart into 100%. it in a way that that you do it and you don't get tired of it. And when you start, when you stop a diet, the next thing you do is not like, I completely give up. I'm going to eat five pizzas. You just continue to do it. Yeah. So whenever you tell people on these calls that they have to start and not stop, I would say if anyone listens to that and say, and says, Oh, well, I, I guess I'm not going to do it then. Well, I guess you're not because <laughs> yeah. that's a you hobby. You really have to start. Yeah. You that's have to hobby. start and produce something yeah. that takes time. If you go to a show and waste 500 waste quote unquote, cause you don't really, and you spend $500 and don't see them back like immediately, it doesn't matter. Cause it's just like when us marketers, you tell us that, Oh, if, if I spend a thousand dollars on a website, how fast am I going to see it back? Well, it depends on how many, how much effort you're going to put into getting people into the website. Because exactly right. the website itself is not going to work. I actually haven't signed up for Art Fonts yet because I'm traveling. I'm out of the country and I can't hold my pieces in my hand. Where do you, where do you, where do you, where do you, where do you go out of the country? I'm in Puerto Rico right now. That's where I'm from. So nice. all the art. Yeah, I know. Everybody in Texas is je jealous of me right now, but <laughs> I have, I have, I have like a couple of buddies. I have a couple of buddies that did the whole like, you know, Puerto Rico expat special tax bracket scenario not too long ago. Right. And, you know, there's like so, a whole community of them. That's part of the marketing strategy that I think I'm going to follow this year. But again, I just started and to get my feet wet with the art thing, mm -hmm. um, I started listening to this podcast and actually seeing that there was real actionable stuff to do. Yes. The only reason why I haven't joined the art storefronts is because when you know you are on vacation, you won't start a gym regimen because you can't be physically there. Yeah. Um, but I made web websites for a living. And when I started looking at all this stuff that the site does, I, I, I thought it was so cheap. I thought yeah. if you really can't commit, I mean, I don't want to diss anybody, but if you really can't commit a thousand dollars to it, then, you know, there must be something else that needs to happen because it's so, so, so cheap. If I were to make a website with all that stuff, I would probably charge like something like $10,000. Yeah. You, 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 you couldn't even get it done for $10,000, but even, even Coral, even more important than that is like y y any of you guys spending time, Messing around with the website is a complete waste of time because you don't have a website problem. You have a marketing problem. And until you start fixing yeah. the marketing problem, the business is not going to go anywhere. I put a website up and I'm not a typical client. I put a website up because I do websites for a living, which yep. is not the case for everybody. So to me, it took me like a day yep. to set it up because it was a copy of another website even. It's not even like a, a website I did from scratch. So it's a completely different thing. If I had nothing and no experience and I was really good, which a lot of people on these calls are better at painting than me, but if I were really good like them, I would spend money on, on this kind of website like in a heartbeat because it's just 
such a learning curve. You know the amount of paintings you can make in that time? Yes. <laughs> careful, <laughs> careful, Coral. Happened. I'm going to have to put you on commission if you keep this up. Uh, no, and I just say, if, and I will full disclosure, I haven't signed up yet because I'm not in Texas and my studio is um, in my house. But people engage with you on a personal level. So if you want to start an email list, just put your mom and dad and your coworkers. That's how it starts. You know, whatever email you can get your hands on. I'm not going to say go scraping because that's illegal, but you know, yeah. do what you got to do. <laughs> just do. Do what you got to do. But anyway, I just wanted to say that all, I just find so much value in, in these things that you do, Patrick, because just people, they're so full of it online. Oh, you're going to make six figures in a month. Oh, I know. You don't graduate until you make this money. I'm like, come on, girl. I do marketing. I know that's full crap because it's not, it's not fair for artists. And then it'll muddy the waters for other legitimate platforms where you can actually learn to do your own things. Because if you hire an agency like, like I do for my clients, it's a different kind of consulting, then you can't really do anything without the agency. Yeah. So you're basically left with, nothing not even the website because sometimes the hosting will be like oh so sorry you didn't pay for the hosting this month your website is out yeah and you're kind of the, the whole the whole thing is right just there. frustrating but i love you i love you coming on the sessions enjoy oh well, it, i love you and that's my husband on the thing sorry no, <laughs> let, me, it's all good. let me say hi <laughs> hi yeah, hi <laughs> this is <on> my home <laughs> Awesome. But yeah, the, these sessions are great. So please don't stop them. Even if you sell so much that you can't do them, just continue to do them anyway. Right. <laughs> They're great. I will for sure. Thank you, Coral. Appreciate you. I wouldn't mind being in Puerto Rico right now. That sounds kind of nice. All right. Who else, guys? Questions? All right. Richard, I got you. And then Janet, Charlotte, you guys were brave and turned your cameras on. So I got to pick on you guys next. So get ready. Get some questions. Get some questions together. Uh, go ahead, Richard. Can you hear me? Yeah, I gotcha. All right. Um, I have literally thousands of digital artwork. I used to be a, a, a cord painter. Mm -hmm. The business model didn't work for me. It took me three months to a year to do my painting. Oh, well. Wow. But now I have literally thousands of these digital paintings. Mm -hmm. And I have no way of figuring out what stuff is going to sell. You know, I, I send stuff to friends and family or people, or, you know, I have a contact list. Um, and they'll say, oh, that's beautiful or whatever. But I have no way of working through uh, all these digital images, figuring out if I do go with, with your website, which I'm very seriously considering mm -hmm. uh, with your program. How do I determine, you know, what, what things will sell? There's only, there's, only, there's only one way to determine. You have a bunch of products and you're like, I don't know which ones are selling. I, I, I don't know what, where to go. And early on, because you haven't gotten them in front of eyeballs, you, 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 however you decide, or however I decide, it's all the same. It's all finger in the air, right? Finger in the air. Ah, uh, these ones, right? So if you have no feedback, you just pick the ones that you think are the best, that you like the most, okay? And then you start marketing, right? Your problem is you have a product you haven't taken to market. And the, the thought that you can send some to friends or you can show some to the people that know, like, and trust you, and somehow that's gonna be validation is utter, total, and complete fallacy. It's a trap. The only thing that can tell you is when somebody goes into a pocket and they pull out the proverbial credit card and they slide it, right? That is the only thing that can tell you. I can't tell you, no one on this call can tell you. The transaction, the almighty capitalism is the only thing that can tell you. So you're not gonna know until you give that a shot. So what would I do? I would say, Richard, have you gotten this work in front of people? And do you have any basis for understanding? Do you have a bunch of it on social? And do you know which one's got more likes, comments, and shares? If, if so, great. We're going to put those 50 up on the homepage, and we're going to start marketing. After enough people have come to the site and seen it and interacted with it, we're going to say, here are the ones that are selling best. Let's move these up to the top. Let's drop these other ones, get some new ones in, and keep going and going and going. But, but. I would only advise that, and I would only advise that you sign up if you have indeed sold these creations to people not named mom, dad, brother, sister, family, friends, right? You've gotta sell these things to strangers. And so I would likely, if I were you in your shoes right now, sign myself up for a local fair or show that I can do, get some selection of inventory, however I need to do that. If they're all digital images and you're gonna to have to get some printed, get them into the booth and attempt to sell them to strangers. If that works, then you have validated your art and you have a marketing problem like the rest of us. Otherwise, you need to validate that that work will sell. So that's the bu that's the bucket that you're in. Okay. And there's no shortcuts. Literally no shortcuts. You have to you have to attempt to sell it to strangers. That's it. Otherwise, you'll never know. So so you're saying that I should even 
um, by your program until I validate. I don't know. I don't want you to. I don't want you to. Because you, here, here, here's the problem. Could you buy my program and could we help you validate? Yes. My fear for you, okay, is th this is this is this is what everyone does. This is what everyone does that are in your shoes, okay. I need a logo and I need a bank account and I need to understand what the shipping ramifications are and I need to understand what the tax implications are and I need to go and find a printer and I'll just get started when I have 25 pieces and the excuses and nonsense that come in there and get in there is all the things you should not be working on. The only thing I want you doing is taking those two things down off the wall, going and setting them up on a table and starting to talk to strangers. I want you to do it today. I want you to literally, I, I want you to tell me, hey, Patrick, I actually live on a main thoroughfare and there's a ton of traffic in front of my house. I want you to set the table up in your driveway right now the minute you get off this session. My point is you do not let anything get in the way of the quickest way where you can go and find whether or not that work's going to sell. And you never know. You never know. It might be a home run right out of the gates. You might sell so many of them. Or it might be crickets. And you'll never know until you get there, right? So in pre-COVID times, and it's starting to be the case again, the easiest way to do it is a show or fair, right? You're going to get off this call. You're going to find the local show or fair. It could be a farmer's market. It could be a brewery. It could be at anything. And you're going to book the damn booth today. P pay the deposit down because you know what happens then? No more bullshit can enter the equation because you got a booth deposit down, right? Then you're going to get the inventory together. Then you're going to go and set up in that booth and you're going to try to sell to strangers. You're going to have 30, 40, 50 conversations in most cases, right? That's pretty hard to do. The, the most ideal way to do that is in the, in the real world, right? Can you do that in a digital capacity? Yeah, you can. That's where the live art show comes in, right? And there's this link called the, the, the art validation strategy that we have that we're throwing in the chat and I'll email it to you. There's like a little bit of a guide in there you can use. But my point is, is I want you to find out immediately whether or not the work is going to sell, right? Okay. And how many people, right. yeah, and how many people, and how many people were you like, I'm thinking about signing up for your program. And I'm like, no, don't sign up for the program, right? Because I want you to win. You know, the analogy, the analogy that I always give, and I love it because it's a good one is, you and I both want to be restaurant tours. We've always both wanted to be restaurant tours, right? And... You and I sit down, we're having a beer, and we're like, you know what? This is going to be our year. Let's start a restaurant. Ready, set, go. So I do it one way. I go and start working on my business plan, and it takes me months. And then I take that down to the bank, and I work on getting a loan. That takes me another couple of months. And then I go and find a building, and then I lease all the restaurant equipment. And then I buy all of this stuff and hire a maitre d' and get the menus printed and figure out the sign. And then a year and a half later, I open. And you know what happens? Everybody comes into my restaurant, eats once and leaves, doesn't come back because the food's not good enough. Do you know what you did? You went to Costco and you got one of those little rolling carts for 50 bucks. You made your tacos, Richard's tacos, and you threw up a sign and you walked into an office building unannounced and you just let the smell start wafting up and, you, and a line formed. That line formed and everyone was like, Richard, these are good, but they weren't great. So I appreciate them. Uh, but thanks. And then you went home the next day and you're like, okay, they don't like my tacos. And then the next thing you did, Next weekend, you tried your burgers out and you went into a different office building. You set up the sign. You said Richard's Burgers. And you know what happened? You had a line around the corner and everyone's like, hey, Richard, this was phenomenal. Can you come back in a week? This was so good, right? And everyone's telling their friends. All of a sudden, you're like, ha ha, I know I've got a product the market wants. And then you go and open your restaurant and it's killing it, right? So I don't want you to do anything but push the damn cart into Costco and figure out whether or not you've got a meal that, that works. And if you don't, okay, if you don't and you still want to do it, it's not because you're a crappy artist. It's just because you need to shift from your tacos to your burgers, right? And no one ever talks about that lesson. Pablo Picasso, when he died, had 45,000 unsold works in his inventory. 45,000. What do you think that guy was doing? He was trying tacos, and then he was trying burgers, and then he was trying Italian food, and that didn't work, and then he started making Chinese food, and that worked for a series. So there's a lot of analogies in there, but nobody ever talks about that, do they? No. You're like, shut up now, Patrick. That was a lot. I get it. But yeah, that's what I want you to do. All right, I get it. All right, book it today. Don't wait. Book it today. All right. All right. Thanks, Richard. Have a good weekend. Aaron, you're up. Aaron, I'm no longer driving in the car, Benson. <laughs> All right, you got to unmute, Aaron. I can't hear. What's going on? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, man. Uh, question, bro. Like, how? Oh, I lost you for a second. You you muted yourself again, Aaron. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was at your pods or something. Hit the hit the mute on the bottom of your phone again. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. 
Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, how uh, successful is this program for photographers? Photographers and artists doesn't matter. It's the exact same. It's the exact same. It's it's a combination okay. of things, right? Like, you know, under uh, underpinning your well, you're you're just wondering if it works for photographers. Period is partially what you're asking, right? right? And yes, it 100 percent works for photographers. There's no difference between photographers and artists. I actually tend to think that photographers have a leg up on artists for a number of reasons. One, the sheer amount of subject material that you can churn out. Um, you know, mm -hmm. the fact that you can the, you have to get things printed every single solitary time, and so it forces you into the print market and to think a little bit more openly and honestly about having metal, having acrylic, having canvas, having a fine art paper, having wood, you know? So it works It works the same. It, 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 it's, it's got nothing to do with subject material. It has to do, or, or, or subject format, you know, artist, photographer, combination there. It, it comes down to niche selection. It comes down to right. how hard you're working at it, right? Are you working mm -hmm. at your marketing? But yeah, there's, there's literally zero difference. I mean, the end product goes on the wall, right? Nobody cares right. how it's created. They just care whether or not that, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. So you can totally do it. But right. do you... Do you have a service-based business in photography currently and you want to start doing the fine art thing or where are you at? Well, I'm kind of in a place where I kind of do everything. I mean, I do, I do portraits for client work, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, all that, in, that, in that whole realm. And then, like, you know, I also take time to focus on my own art, which mm -hmm. I do, like, macro and landscape and, you know, a bunch of stuff, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, drone stuff, I think, you know, a bunch of stuff. So it's just like, you know, I'm trying to focus more on, pushing my art out you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's kind of adding a different element to what i already have going as a portrait photographer you know yes yes i think um you know one of the things that infuriates me okay and when i say infuriates infuriates me all right is service-based photographers okay service-based photographers n n not understanding the revenue potential of their business okay and when i say you're, you're a portrait photographer right i'm not going to use you as an example i'm going to use uh, my good buddy's wife okay who is my our local christmas card uh slash uh, uh she does like some sort of halloween thing with the pumpkins and then she does an right. easter one right and she picks her spot and she knows the lighting and she she uh, uh, lines everybody up every 15, 30 minutes, whatever the, the time slot is, and the parents come and, you know, whatever. Much mini shoots here. Yeah. That business is fundamentally trading dollars for hours, right? It's trading yeah. dollars for hours. You can, as you get better, raise your prices a little bit, but at a point, you're going to hit a ceiling where it's always just trading dollars for hours. Okay. Right. What if, when I went to go get those kid shots, there was a table, okay, with an assistant while she's shooting the kids? The table and the assistant, someone has all of the various five different media types, and it'll be help helpful if I do show and tell here. Right. So now I'm going to put you into the example, all right? Aaron's over there doing his shoot, and he's got my kids right. over there. And instead of me just being in the background checking my phone bored because my wife dragged me to another one of these nonsensical things, your your assistant is is going, hey, Patrick, by the way, here are the five different media types that you can get these things printed out on. This is canvas, uh, it gets wrapped edge to edge, it's ready to frame. This is a fine art paper, I have a green screen so it's making this image look a little wonky. Uh, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's framed, it can be framed in a number of different ways. This is a print on wood, it's a really cool new texture, it, it, it's ready to hang. This is metal, um, you can see the back of it and then it's ready to hang. This is acrylic, and by the way, Patrick, I just want to let you know, you know, one of the things that we like to do is because you booked this session with us, if you want to order any prints, if you want to get some prints for your house, uh, or sometimes people like to give them to grandma or grandpa or send them to someone that's far away, we're offering a one-time special. You can take 25% off of any of them, and we can get them to you in a week. So let me know if you want to do any of that. They're on the table. You can play with them. Then when the session is over with, I'm going to upload all those images into a gallery, and a month or two months before Christmas, I am going to email those people and say, hey, just want to let you know, I still have your image galleries up on my site. If anyone needs any last minute Christmas gifts, I'm doing such and such off on every single solitary one for such and such period of time. So now, instead of you just trading dollars for hours, you are increasing your AOV, okay? AOV is average order mm -hmm. value. And so let's say you charge $500 a session. Okay, great, you're charging $500 a session now because you're offering the prints to me, okay, at a table and, and via email, 
your average order value without you working any extra hours has now gone from 500 a session to 750 or 850 dollars a session okay some people are buying some don't but that's what it averages out to pretty fantastic then mm -hmm. because you're booking sessions with these same people again and again and again what ends up happening is you build up an archive and that archive has the ability to generate sales for you in the future as long as you just email right so there's an additional right. revenue source that you can bolt right into your business just by being the subject matter expert and am i going to run around with all five of the different media types in my car 24 hours a day, yeah, I am. You wanna know why? Because no one has any damn idea what they are. You don't even know the total right. difference between all of them. No one does, right? So when you add that element to your business, I like that. And then during the course of that, because all these people that are hiring you for portraits know, like, and trust you, they like your work, they know you're confident with a camera, if you start letting these people know that you're also selling fine art, which you're not doing right now, most almost none do, then guess what? They'll start buying it, right? When they need to get art, sure. they'll be like, Aaron might have some stuff. Let me go check it out, right? And then you're going to start getting commissions for other cool stuff. So I like the service-based component because your day job actually has the ability to generate sales for what you really want to do, which is the fine art portion, right? There's a whole lot of other people that have a day job. It's not anywhere near related. It's not going to help them. They work at the DMV, right? It's not going to help you sell any damn art. So that's what I'd say. Long-winded rant, but that's what I'd say. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that was a really good uh, explanation because that's that's the realm that I'm like. Trust me, I, mean, I know. I've, I've I, sold some I know. stuff, you know. So, but that's the realm that I'm that I'm like. I know. I want to focus more on, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and you and you have the same problem as anyone else does. Like, you have to validate which one of all those styles is best, right? You got the macro thing, right. you got the drone thing, you got the you know the landscape thing, but w which ones are going to work, right? Like, you don't you won't know until you really start pushing them all. But right. yeah, it, it it can work. You got to market a problem like anything else. You got to validate the art. And just be extremely comfortable with the service-based portion of your business because it's going to take you years of grinding at that baby to bring in the income, mm -hmm. to, to cook the fine art business up so it starts producing more, right? Like you get right. started and the service-based portion of the business is here and the fine art or the, the, the service base is here and the fine arts here. Your goal is to get it more like this and eventually get it like this, right? right? Get, that, right, get exactly. that shift because your, your business fundamentally is trading dollars for hours. It always will be. But if you bolt that print right. thing in, Start getting that revenue coming in. You're the guy that they go to for prints. Ain't bad, right? Right, not for sure. It's That's another revenue stream. Idea. Yeah, it's another revenue stream. Okay, for sure. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, next up is Linda. Go ahead, Linda. Are you there, Linda? You yeah, hi. Hi. Sorry. I haven't really followed all of what you said, mm -hmm. um, uh, but I got a few answers from uh, your uh, colleagues here, which is really good answers for you, my questions. Awesome. Um, so obviously, I've been looking for dropshipping company. That's probably mm -hmm. why I'm here, because I, I really didn't really know. Um, mm -hmm. Oh God, it's really late in, in, in where I am. Yeah, where <laughs> I've lost my mind a little bit. Where, I think, where yeah, are you? Do you have, are you in Europe? Uh, I'm actually in Sweden at the moment, so Sweden. everything is very up in the air. I used to live in London, mm -hmm. so I don't, um, I don't have a physical, I don't have a physical space anymore. Yes. Um, I don't have like exhibitions, markets, everything I've mm -hmm. done for ten years. I don't have, mm -hmm. but obviously online I still have stuff. So I've been yes. looking for drop shipping, yes. basically something where. Uh, my body and me doesn't have to be at the same location as <laughs> yes, yes. The artwork. Yes, like, totally possible, yeah, easy I, to do. Where Are, are your think. sales domestic here in the United States? Are they all in Europe or what's the balance look like there? Sorry, what did you say there? Yeah. You, are, are your sales mostly in Europe um, or are some in the United States, North America? Like where? No, uh, that's the thing. I have a total untapped market in America. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I guess that's why I get a bit lost and zoom out as well because a lot of things aren't really relevant to me and also the language. Because mm -hmm. um, I have, yeah, it's a bit funny when when I left London. It's a bit of a risk to be out of mind, out of sight. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit worried about that mm -hmm. actually. Um, also because of Brexit, um, posting is. There's a lot of complications. Yes. Um, so I don't know. So I'm trying to figure out ways where um, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Well, the, the print on demand, the print on demand is really, really easy. That's like two seconds. That's the least of your problems. That's that takes approximately one hour to set up and you're done. You pick your mm -hmm. media types, you set the prices. 
Uh, you list them for sale, and when they sell, the order gets printed, the order gets boxed, your logo gets slapped on the side of the box, the, printer, the order gets shipped, and you don't have to touch anything, anything at all. Yeah, no, it's excellent, it's great. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I was wondering, do you have art papers? I think this is what I want to say, well, I keep on losing my mind, because I'm a visual person, I want to see um, a list of, yes. you know, yes. All of them. stuff, whatever, and I want to see that's the one I want, and this is what I can afford, and yep. I can't afford it right now, but in June I can, and because that's the way I, yeah. I work. That, that, that's zero, zero issues with any of that. All the various different media types, high end, low end, in between, all the various different media types. All you have to worry about is selling it. That's it. So you have the art papers as yes. well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because I know you keep on sending me emails about having a demo. I having 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 a demo. Yeah, you can you can do that. But you're, you're you know, I, I don't want you focusing or worrying about the printing. The printing is the easiest thing in the history of mankind. You know, the yeah, only no, I, I want I want to um, see a price list actually and uh, okay. uh, price points yes. that you're offering. Um, or look at it properly. Yes, we, we use Bay Photo on the West Coast and we use graphic dimensions on the East Coast. I would just Google Bay Photo and I would look at their price list. We're a little bit cheaper. We're a little bit cheaper than their prices. Some items, some items, it's the same. Some items is a little bit cheaper, but that's that's who we use. And Bay Photo is one of the biggest print houses in the entire United States. Do you have a link? Because I've been all around your website now. Yeah, 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 yeah. One yeah, of my please. colleagues, one of my colleagues, will put it in the chat. Uh, where do I get answers and clarity? To my questions. Um, but I would, I, I would say, I would say, if you're not selling in, the, if you're not selling the work already, okay, and like you're not getting orders on a regular basis, I would not spend one minute worrying about pricing or shipping there. I just put a link in there in the chat for you. You can check that out. It's called Bayphoto.com. I still don't understand. You must have a monthly charge for your website and a yearly charge, and you probably have a price plan. Those sort of kind of things. I want oh, to you see. want you want to see that pricing? Okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What what you need to do is get on a demo, which is like it's a it's a Zoom call where they show you all of that stuff, all the pricing, all the behind that's the scenes. That's why I have to do the demo. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's why I'm, what, I'm reluctant. I I have a client base. I just want to expand it. For sure. Of course. For sure. What what will yes. what will happen to you if you don't want to like wait for that? Is we always get slammed at the end of the month because we have a deal going on, and ne this time. A week from now, they'll be running one on this session. So if you if you want to just do that and not request a demo and just show up for that, you can do that. I'm talking same exact time one week from now. Same exact time. Then the day after that, which is on Saturday, they'll be running one early in the morning, which will be a little bit more friendly of a time zone for you. Um, because this one is, I think, they, April, what, are they, what time are they running on Saturday? Do you know the timing? Is it is it 9 a.m. CST and then 11 a.m. CST? Uh, 11 a.m. CST and 1 p.m. CST. Okay, so even 11 a.m. CST yeah. is a couple hours earlier, so that'll that'll be, that'll make your life a little bit easier. I, so, I probably get an email about that, won't I? I'm sure you will. Yeah, we like yeah, one yeah, thing yeah, we are yeah. not shy about, as you are well aware, is emailing. Yeah, we do plenty of that. No, but this is it. I need to see things in in pictures and writing. If you just for sure, for sure. Where where in Sweden are you? Just out of curiosity. Uh -oh, I think we lost you. Let's see if it clicks back. I'm actually second. studying, or I was, and mm -hmm. now I finished. Uh, I'm in a little town, um, sorry, between Malmö and Stockholm. Yeah. And and all my connections really are uh, Malmö, Stockholm, London, Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So I've been a bit confused why I'm I'm looking for the next step. Um, but that's where a company like you is very interesting for me because I'm still moving around. Yep. Uh, I don't. I can't have the stock I used to have. Um, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The POD lets you. Let you. Yeah. Truly lets you I be anywhere. I basically sat in Thailand um, two winters before COVID. For sure. And I was looking. I was looking for exactly stuff like this, so I could physically be away. Yep. The biggest. The biggest problem with popping around in all those countries in today's day and age is getting locked out of your Facebook and Instagram account because they're so lame about that all the time. But that. that that's literally it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, look, look, look for those emails, and then that's what I would do. And it, or you, you could schedule one if you like as well. It doesn't matter to us. Um, but it, just yeah, throw, no, it, throw yeah. it out there. I might do that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Okay. Coral was asking. I'm gonna unmute you again, Coral. <laughs> um, I can't you can. say hi now because I'm getting my father-in-law haircut. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's all good. Um, 
<laughs> How far out in advance? It doesn't matter. There's no there's no magic when to announce when to announce um you know that you're having one. It can be a week before, it can be 3 days before. Just pick one, announce it and do it because you're going to be running thousands of them, right? You're going to be running thousands of them. That'd be a little bit of fiasco. I shouldn't make a whole lot of noise, right? <laughs> For yeah. the first one. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just, 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 you're going to be running thousands of them. Don't worry about it and just do it. Okay. I muted you so I don't hear the haircut. Um, plus, I want you to focus on it. I don't want you to hack your father in law's hair off. Um, okay. Good session today. I feel like I've talked myself out of horsepower here. So I need to, I need to close her down. Um, we didn't even talk about the Valentine's Day marketing. I, I'm out of gas. Guys, have a great weekend. Um, you know, if, if, if you're just discovering us or if you're in Coral's boat or one of the other boats, you're all good. We're not going anywhere. Um, if you liked what you saw and you're curious, you want to learn more, definitely request a demo. It's a one-hour Zoom call with one of our lovely outreach people, and they'll walk you through all the bells and whistles of our software and all the pricing and everything that I didn't talk about. Except you, Richard. You are, doing, you are, do, you are going and getting a booth this weekend, Richard. I'm looking at you. You're going and getting a booth immediately, and then you're going to let me know how it goes. Um, and there's buttons all over our website and everywhere on that. And I'm going to send you an email in a little bit with the links and a replay. Actually, I didn't record it properly. So the, the video I said you for a replay will just be a presentation from another session, but I promise it will, it will be awesome. Um, do I have one pulled up? I've got it pulled up. I think do I, I did. Let me see. I'll just show you what I'm going to send you so you can, you can seize it. Uh, get this out of the way. So there'll be a video like this, the whole session, the Q&A, all the jazz, so you can watch whatever you want to watch again. Um, and then links like the Art Selling Pyramid, the Don't Be a Starving Artist book, more on the importance of a collector list. I love that one. Um, I'm going to send you a guide on how to run quick. I didn't even talk about this one. I'm going to send you a guide on how to run live art shows, which is awesome. Uh, I'm giving you examples of the art shows that I, that I talked about in the presentation, um, the Art Market Report. Um, and I've got some other stuff about running live art shows, the podcast, so there's, there's some additional goodies in there. So all of that is coming to you. Um, have wonderful weekends all and, uh, hope to see you guys again on a future session and or on the inside, uh, and or in the emails or whatever. <laughs>